pleasure to be here. Thanks for coming out. We're called out of dispute. We're from a little town called Grand Rapids in a state called Michigan, some 3,000 miles across the Atlantic Ocean from here, give or take. Such an honor, such a joy, such a privilege to have the opportunity to make this trip again after three years away, three, four years away, whatever it's been, time's no longer real. Special night, we've been looking forward to this one for a long time. Seriously. Did a full, did a full two month US run for this record, but this is the biggest show we've played so far in the most beautiful room on the planet. Thanks for making us feel at home. Thanks for welcoming us back. It really, uh, really means a lot. These songs are for you.
the secrets I keep. Water break. <laughs> hydrate or dihydrate, I've heard said. Everybody doing all right? I mentioned, I mentioned what a privilege it is to be here, how full of joy we are to be returning to the thing that has composed the majority of our lives at this point. We've been doing this for longer, I think, than I care to admit to an audience full of people, but we still love doing it and are so thankful for the opportunity and it wouldn't be here without all of you, so thank you for giving us a reason to show up so far from home to let us live out our childhood dreams of being in the dumb band forever. It's pretty fucking awesome. Doubly so in this particular instance because we get to do it with two incredible fucking bands every night. Everyone give it up for our friend Elise who played first as Oceanator and our friends from Florida and Cool Kids. My, my new pre-show ritual is to sit in the green room and listen to Elise run through songs quietly on her guitar. It gives me full body chills every time. She's a fucking incredible talent. And Pool Kids. Man, I don't even know where to begin with Pool Kids. It's entirely possible that they are, and I've never, I don't think, said this about any band before, but like, the next big band, because... Uh, just, just an incredible combination of great songwriting, great talent, great charisma. It's been such a fucking joy to get to know them, to watch them play every night. And listen, one, one other reason, and I'm talking forever mostly because 
well, I have a lot to talk about, and, uh, and uh, I, I run like 10 miles up here every night, so I get to catch my breath for a moment if I talk more, but fucking tangled hair. Their first show back in, I don't know, fucking four years, I think, or, or thereabouts. What a privilege to have them come out of retirement. They don't do it very often, and very few bands do it as well as they do. We've known them for a long time, and they're fucking exceptional. So, uh, just a lot of thank yous tonight, and uh, these songs are for those three bands. Visible. 
turn it on me. If I can, I still get it. Or will the
I see everything. Can you play through Vancouver after? There's so many friends here tonight, so many people we consider family. It's uh, one more reason to be celebrating the evening. Listen, we wrote these songs 12 years ago, 12, 13 years ago. Maybe some of them 14 years ago. It's difficult to remember even last week, as mentioned. Previously, time ceased to be real, ceased to register in my brain. Well, we wrote these songs 12 years ago in our, in, our, in our early 20s. It's a funny thing when you make a piece of art, whatever it might be, write a poem, paint a picture, take a photograph, make a short film, write a song. You. You freeze a moment in time, you make a thing, whatever it was that inspired the thought initially permanent, and you have it. 
forever, and if you introduce it into the public forum, so does everybody else who's interested in having it. And when you revisit that, as we have over the last decade and plus playing these songs, you start to you start to lose track a bit of what the songs initially were about. The resonance they had at an earlier moment in your life tends to fade. They become different things. You find meaning in other aspects of your life to attach them to. You engage with an audience playing a show. You grow up, you find new relationships, you experience new things, and you move away from that frozen moment. And, and that's how it's been with these songs. I don't think we had really thought about what they were about or what we were feeling at the time that we wrote them a long time ago until we started to realize we might actually have the opportunity to do this anniversary tour first in the US and then here. And we started to think about those songs and think about what they meant back then. And, and uh, I think what we, what we came to understand, particularly after a forced hiatus from the thing we love doing and as the world has either gotten measurably worse or as the curtain has fallen and it's become increasingly visible how terrible things can be in this world we realize that in a lot of ways these songs which are about loss which are about tragedy which are about new absences and coping with them which are about gentrification and foreclosed homes and death and sadness uh, we realized those songs still kind of meant the same fucking thing to us, and uh, that these are that these are universal things. Uh, uh, these are things that are experienced not just at a moment in time in your life, but throughout and by everyone. And at first. Uh, when we were leading up to the first the tour in the US, I, I, I focused pretty intently on that because that's what I was focused on generally in life outside of this band. And when we got to the point where we could play them for an audience and we were in spaces like this, I think it became clear that what the record is ultimately about isn't despair, it's about finding a refuge from it, it's about finding a community and... And I bring this up now, one, because for us, that's always been this. It's been punk rock, it's been hardcore, it's been communities that were all inclusive and that engaged with people from a variety of different backgrounds that gave everyone an opportunity to be whoever the fuck they wanted to be. And I bring it up too because in an increasingly hostile world, it's increasingly important that we protect spaces like this because there are so many out to get other people, to punish other people for who they are, who are intent on marginalizing communities for their whole benefit. We live in a world rampant with transphobia, with homophobia, with racism, with sexism, with xenophobia, with war, with violence, with poverty. And in the midst of all of that, we have this, and, and I wanted to say thank you everyone for coming out and for reminding us what it means to be in a space where everybody is celebrated and to challenge everyone, all of us on stage included, to not just feel that way when we're here, but when we walk out of the door and we go home to look out for people, to look out for our communities, because as the world gets worse and worse and worse and worse, there is no hand from the sky coming to save us. There is no sweeping governmental change that will fix the problems. We fix us. We look out for each other, neighbor to neighbor, street to street. It's the only way things get better. Uh, so thank you for coming here. Thank you for indulging my long-winded fucking speech. Thanks for, for taking care of each other. Thanks to Tangled Hair. Thanks to Pool Kids. Thanks to Oceanator. Thanks to Kirk. Thanks to Coco. Thanks to everybody here for making this night special. We have three more songs left. They're for you, too. <laughs> Fuck turfs.
comedy. Have I been losing it? Completely losing sanity? Or has it been fabricated? Fashioned by the worst of me? I know I'm not the... Because I watched the jar break and I've been trying to repair it every single step. Everybody who left too early because they didn't feel they had another option. It's for Steve. It's for Ariel. This song's for Bill. Take off the world. 
We only have time for two more, so we're gonna play two more real quick. Thanks for coming. It's an old song. You still cross my mind from time to time. I mostly smile. Still so set in finding out where we went wrong and why. So I retrace our every step with an unsure pen. Why? 
and the storms touch ground. And the floor lights were down. Turn the radio show up. There's a woman who got thrown from her car to a barbed wire fence. He was six months pregnant. Her and the baby lived. You tried, but the line. Thanks a lot, man. Have a wonderful night. See you soon.